order to be a great boomerang thrower, you have to be a scientist, you have to be an inventor, you have to be a craftsman, and you get to wear all these different hats in order to become a great athlete in the sport. My name's Logan Broadbent, and I'm a member of the world champion U.S. Boomerang Team. Broadbent is one of the best boomerang throwers in the world. When I tell people I'm on the U.S. Boomerang Team, the first thing that comes to their mind is, what? We have a U.S. Boomerang Team? You've got to be kidding, right? But it's true, and we've had the chance to travel all over the world throwing and catching boomerangs. It takes a lot to do well in the sport, from making custom gear to understanding the science behind boomerang flight. Mastering all this lets competitors succeed in events designed to test specific skills, like speed, accuracy, and distance. There's even one event that judges how long the boomerang stays in the air, and another called trick catch and doubling. Where you actually throw two boomerangs at once, and you have to catch them behind the back, under the legs, with your feet, uh, do all sorts of different catches to earn points. So I've actually been throwing boomerangs since before I could walk, and it's because my dad was involved in the sport for years and years before me. Uh, he was one of the earliest competitors in the sport of boomerangs. Even from a young age, I was going to different tournaments with him, you know, learning the different events, uh, becoming pretty good pretty early. At age 14, Broadbent was the youngest person ever to join the U.S. boomerang team. Since then, they've picked up three world championship titles, and Broadbent currently ranks second in the world as an individual. He also holds the U.S. record for distance. 177 yards all the way out with the full return 177 yards back. And he's one of the few boomerang throwers in the world that can do this incredible move. So the backflip catch, we don't actually have to do in competition. I just think it's fun to do, especially in a, in a crowd or, or for, for my friends. But it's not just about fun. Competitors need to understand how boomerangs fly to do well in the sport. So there's actually a lot of physical principles that are operating on a boomerang in flight. So what makes a boomerang come back includes gyroscopic precession, differential lift, centrifugal force, momentum of inertia, angular momentum, and torque. Okay, uh, so basically the best way to think of it is that each wing is an airplane wing and this airfoil allows the boomerang to generate lift. But a boomerang is thrown vertically, so the direction of lift is to the side, unlike an airplane flying horizontal where the direction of lift is up in the air. So you throw it nice and vertical, straight up and down, it'll curve around and come back. And whether it's a two-wing boomerang, like the traditional ones that we think of, or a three-wing boomerang, they're both operating off the exact same principles of flight. Getting as good as broadbent takes time and practice. But the first step is mastering a basic throw. So all boomerangs in the world are thrown straight up and down, nice and vertical. You always want the top side of the boomerang facing you. That's the side with the airfoil. It's also the side that's painted. And if you're a right-handed thrower, you want the wind hitting your left cheek coming across from left to right. If you're a left-handed thrower, you'll actually be throwing with the wind coming from right to left. Typically, I will pinch grip the boomerang, so I'll use my thumb and my index finger to hold it this way. Sometimes you'll wrap the front finger around the boomerang if you need to get a little bit more power or a little more grip. But there's really no wrong way to do it as long as you're throwing it nice and vertical, straight out in front of you. You don't have to throw it high, you don't have to throw it low. Vertical is probably the most important part. Competitive boomerang throwing may not be a well-known sport, but there are a few things most people do know about boomerangs. They come from Australia and they were used as weapons. Except, that's not exactly true. So the returning boomerang was never actually used as a weapon. What was used as a weapon by the Aborigines was called a Kylie. It was much larger and heavier than a typical returning boomerang, and it would travel in a straight line. So almost like an aerodynamic baseball bat that was used to, to bring down game. There were civilizations all over the world that had throw sticks. King Tut's tomb in Egypt had, uh, had throw sticks. The Hopi Indians of the Southwest had throw sticks. So there's all these different you know, examples of throw sticks being used before we invented bows and arrows and other forms of, of weaponry. But the returning boomerang was never actually used to hit anything. Eight. So you may think, what's so difficult about boomerangs, right? I mean, you're just throwing and catching in the same place. Well, it actually involves a lot of athleticism to be able to throw and catch a boomerang consistently and in the different ways that we have to do it in competition especially considering how fast the boomerangs fly. They're moving anywhere from 80 to 90 miles per hour when they're leaving your hand, and then they're coming back a little bit slower, maybe slowing down to 60 miles per hour by the time you're catching it. And they fly in all sorts of conditions. Even the simplest catches require a surprising amount of skill and physical stamina. Oftentimes it's windy, so it does require a little bit of running around and, and being able to react to changes in the flight. And you know, 
boomerang throwers tend to be very agile. They tend to be very quick. They tend to be able to react quickly to, to, to changes. As boomerang competitors, we're not able to practice every single day. It would just be way too much wear and tear on our shoulders and on our elbows. So we have to do a lot of different cross training to stay fit which gives broadbent an advantage. I'm actually an endurance athlete by trade. I do marathons, I do triathlons. I also am big in the obstacle course racing scene, which is another fast growing sport. But all of those things help contribute to making me a much better boomerang competitor. But athleticism isn't all it takes to be a great boomerang thrower. The ability to adjust for different conditions is important as well. Every single event requires a different type of boomerang. But what's also important to remember is that we're up against mother nature. Little wind. Let's wait for that to slow down for a sec. So when the winds are kicking up, or if it's raining, or if you're at a higher altitude, you need to think about how that's going to affect the flight of a boomerang. Which means the right gear is critical. So critical, in fact, that competitive boomerang throwers don't actually buy their gear off the shelf. So what's unique about our sport is that we actually make the equipment that we use in competition. So many of my boomerangs were either made by me, or many were made by my teammates as well. If you're able to make good boomerangs that work really well in different conditions, then that gives you a bit of an edge. So the one thing you'll notice about all my boomerangs is that they're super bright colors. It's almost like they're straight out of the 80s, maybe like those MC Hammer pants that, uh, that my parents used to wear. Um, but what's important about that is you, these need to be visible in flight. So I need to be able to identify these quickly and easily, especially if they get caught in the sun. And so, uh, so they're super bright, super bright colors. Some of them aren't that pretty, but sometimes the ugliest boomerangs actually fly the best. And that's important to remember as a competitor. Getting a competitive edge in the sport takes a lot of boomerangs. Broadbent carries almost 100 different kinds in its competition kit. All of these are made for different events and they're made for different weather conditions. So I have three bladed boomerangs, two bladed boomerangs, even four wing boomerangs, uh, depending on the event. And they're all made out of different types of materials. So boomerang technologies actually come a really long way. When most people think of a boomerang, they think of a two-winged, almost V-shaped type of boomerang, something a little bit more traditional. We can still throw these and they work really, really well. But now we still make boomerangs out of birch aircraft grade plywood. Uh, this actually has lead weights embedded in the tips of each to get it to go over 50 meters out. Uh, we have uh, glass infused nylons and different types of plastic materials, PET, polypropylene, uh, all sorts of different types of plastic. Uh, we'll use phenolic materials. Uh, these are doublers for trick catch. Uh, we'll have sheet carbon fiber, uh, which is uh, a very rigid material, but still very lightweight. So that makes for a really nice boomerang. And we even make composite maximum time aloft boomerangs. So these are made out of micro balloons and epoxy covered in carbon and Kevlar fibers. So they're really ultra light, but still very rigid. And they're made to stay in the air as long as possible. Some of the boomerangs that I throw make a really cool sound when they leave my hand. And that's because a lot of them actually have holes and different types of slots built into the boomerangs to create drag. And they make some really amazing sounds. Understanding the physics behind boomerang flight is key in competition. As boomerang competitors, the more that we understand the physics and the aerodynamics happening and how to modify our boomerangs to get them to operate the way we want them to operate, uh, the bigger the advantage we have in competition. Throwers modify their gear, adding materials like tape, rubber bands, and coins to get their boomerangs to fly just right. So if I want to add drag to help slow down the spin rate and higher wind conditions, I may add a couple rubber bands on there. If I want to add a little more weight to get it to go further, to stay more vertical in flight, or even to lay out quicker, I have pennies on each one of these wings. Not only does it depend what you're putting on the boomerang, but where it's placed also plays an important role in the boomerang's flight. And then oftentimes we'll even tune our boomerangs. So we may even twist a wing, giving it more angle of attack, which is going to shorten the range. Or we may twist negative angle of attack, getting it to fly further. If we bend it up, the boomerang will fly higher. If we bend a wing down, it'll fly lower in flight. So understanding all of those different things, uh, you know, obviously leads to being a better competitor. The one thing that I love about boomerangs is that they can be a metaphor for life. Uh, what goes around comes around, throw good out, you'll get good back. If you're a good person, a good citizen, then good things can happen to you.